Welcome back everyone to another episode of All About Mechanics. Now today we're going to be showing you the ruins of Mazatun. We're going to be using the same setup as before with one tank, one healer, one magical DPS and one stamina DPS making sure that no rolls are left out. We're obviously doing it on veteran difficulty and we're going to show you the hard mode as well so you'll have a better understanding of how to actually approach this dungeon once this video is finished. Here we go. Now, with any DLC dungeon, of course, it's going to be pretty difficult, so you need to be really, really aware of mechanics, especially when it comes to blocks, interrupts, and staying out of stupid. So, those rules still do apply, but obviously, this is a little different to what you may have seen before. First couple of ads on the left-hand side, make sure you keep the interrupts on them, and the tank should basically just hold them still and turn them around. They're very easy to deal with. AoE will do most of the work, but you can focus them down if you really want to. However... Obviously, we've tiptoed into the easy stuff and you go straight in now once you get down this ramp to the more difficult stuff. These guys here, these little Ninja Turtle looking things are really, really rough. Make sure the tank turns it away from the group and everybody else stay behind it. Occasionally, these things will do a heavy attack and they will also duck their head into the ground and launch out some nasty splash damage. So you've got to stay away from the front of them. Also, they will um, burrow under the ground and shoot across the room as well, which will knock you over. So be very aware of that. And again, as DPS and healers, stay away from it. Obviously, the tank should pull the rest of the adds in to make sure that they're stacked on top of it, and then your AoE should do the rest. But, again, key rules if you are DPS or healers, stay away from its face. Key role as a tank, turn it away so you stay in its face. Very, very simple. This dude again, same rules as before, but now you've got another big guy beside you which you need to make sure you take as the tank and hold still because he's got a nasty heavy attack. As a DPS or a healer, make sure that if you do get heavy attack, for example, the tank hasn't quite grabbed it yet, make sure you block, otherwise you are going into space and it's going to really, really hurt. These guys have quite a lot of health. They're not too difficult to deal with as long as they're kept still. It's when they run loose that they're a problem. Now, yes, I know that you can skip all these ads, but we're not going to do that. The whole point is to show you the mechanics. So we're going to go up against the next group of ads. These are really, really messy to handle with a tank because you get half the room at once. We've also got a sludge slinger coming up. They're really not very nice. They channel kind of a heavy attack mechanic and they'll charge at a random member of the group. You must be blocking, otherwise you are dead. So focus this guy first while holding the turtle away from the group. If he starts charging, make sure you're looking, make sure you block. You sometimes get one or two of these at a time. If you get two, you're in real, real trouble. So you have to make sure you focus this guy down. The rest of the ads are pretty standard. Any archers or anything like that, here's a charge. That's where you got to block. He died anyway, but he was charging towards one of our group members. If they hadn't blocked, they would have been one shot. It's not a direct one shot. Tank can sustain it. Really tanky players can sustain it, but it's really harsh. It really does hurt. Again, like I was saying, the rest of the ads in the room are pretty standard stuff. The tank should be able to pull them in and stack them up alongside the turtle so they can be killed quite quickly. Watch out for these lightning blasts, however, because they do really, really hurt. They don't have a lot of health, but they do cause a lot of damage. Don't stand in the orange stuff, because that will kill you. You get a nasty dot attached to it. It's sticky. It's horrible. It kills you. Stay out of it. Now, this next pull is not as simple as the last one. Very similar, the Ninja Turtle, nasty ads. We've got some mosquitoes in here as well, which you have to kind of control. They're not too bad, but just bring them in so they die to AoE. But there is also a couple of archers on the outside and another Ninja Turtle. Yes, I know they have a specific name. They're Hajimoto or however you want to pronounce it, but we're going to call them Ninja Turtles for now. Um, now that you've got two of them, the tank has to focus on two at the same time and make sure, again, they are both faced away from the group. If you stand in their AoE, you are in trouble. As you saw, he torpedoed across the floor then. That's what you've got to watch out for, as well as their splash damage from the front. So try and stay behind him as much as possible. The Overseer, the two-hander, coming in from the left. He is also something you have to really watch out for. As we've seen one before up top, they do heavy attack. They're quite nasty. If you block it, you'll be fine. If you don't block it, you're going into space and you'll probably die. Now, remember that turtle was uh, burrowing under the ground. He's on the other side now, so the tank has to reposition him. Again, just be very, very careful. You can see our tank has pinned himself in the corner with everything facing him. That's probably your safest bet rather than trying to fight in the middle of the room because things do get a little bit hectic and they can run around. Whenever he turns, you see that splash again. Stay out of it. Now, the mosquitoes explode, and once they, they blow up, loads of little ones come out. Just stay out of the AoE. Failing that, if they do attack, you make sure you kill them. They're not too problematic. They don't hit that hard, but they're really, really annoying. Now, this boss is very, very simple. He's got some very basic mechanics, but it can go wrong if people don't pay attention. So basically, have yourself in a little formation around the boss where the tank turns it around and everybody else stays behind it or beside it. Then you won't cause any problems. 
Now, when he raises his hand into the air, he's going to jump up like Superman. He's going to land back down wherever he feels. This time, it was just on top of the tank. Now, you don't want to be caught inside that as a DPS or a healer. That will kill you, so be careful. This phase here, when he's squatting, you can see the rocks in the air. When that happens, it's exactly the same as Ethereum Archive. You have to block. If you don't block, it's going to hit you, it's going to stun you, it's going to knock you over, and you're going to take some serious damage. So hand in the air, he jumps. When he's crouching, that's when the rocks are coming in. He does heavy attack the tank occasionally, but he doesn't hit that hard. Just make sure that you block it and you'll be fine. Hit on the rocks again, make sure you're blocking. You can still block cast your abilities if you want, but make sure you're blocking those rocks, otherwise you are going to hit the dirt. Here he goes again, jumping in the air. It's rinse repeat. When he jumped over, when he hits the ground, when he actually lands, there are some rocks that kind of... Um, lay across the floor, they come towards the DPS and the healers. They're a little bit annoying in the term that they will knock you back, a very slight amount, but it's not really that dangerous. It doesn't hit that hard, it won't kill you unless you're really, really low health. So you can step out of it as it's kind of aiming at you, but apart from that, just make sure you're not standing in stupid. Now there are a lot of doors in this dungeon, so there's a lot of load screens. Um, because basically you're going into a temple, there's lots of different rooms that you have to go through before you get out to the other side. Now, there's going to be lots and lots of ad pools, mostly what you've seen already, but everything that you see on the run-up to the bosses is usually teaching you something else that you need to learn for later on. First version of that is what we just saw, the rocks. Rocks fly everywhere, you have to block or you get knocked down. That's very, very, very important because you're going to be greeted soon by stone shapers. These are now your primary targets. You must get rid of stone shapers, otherwise they're going to put their hands in the air, you know what happens with the rocks, everybody's going to die. If you're in situations where you've got a boss and one of those as well, make sure you get the, sh the stone shaper down as fast as possible. This is a fairly typical ad pull. Basically what you need to do is put everything into the middle as the tank, chain in the, the archers and stuff as much as possible, and the DPS and healers if you can, make sure you interrupt anyone doing anything stupid. So if they're channeling an ability or something, you've got to interrupt it, otherwise it's going to cause you a problem. Obviously, there's a lot of enemies in here as well. So, yeah, of course, the tank can pull in a certain amount at a time, but they can't pull them all in at once. So just give them a break. They've got resources just like you do and manage by yourself while they're pulling everything in. Now, there is the stone shaper. That dude in the middle, he is primary. The tank needs to grab him instantly. As you saw, he literally just went straight in and taunted him. That needs to be on the tank at all times. And as soon as he raises his hand, you have all got to block until that phase is over. However, he just got annihilated. And that is how you probably should approach it. Even if you've got low damage as a group, it doesn't matter. Just make sure that he always dies first. There are situations where you get two of them, I believe. But again, make sure they die first before anything else. Now, the mud crab isn't the issue here. The, uh, the new mechanic is that goo on the floor that's just been picked up by the tank. Now, that will make him slower and slower and slower and slower. And his resources do not work. They are empty. He has no stamina. And eventually, he'll have to stop and press a synergy to let go of it. Now we're killing the mud crabs to kind of lessen the blow a bit, but you don't have to. Once he drops it, someone else can pick it up and you need to put it into that water. So now he can't move any further. He's slowed to the to the max. There's nothing he can do. <laughs> so we're making fun of him. I'll pick it up, or somebody else did, straight into the water and it gets rid of it. That mechanic is very, very important for the boss before last. Pick up the goo, put it in the water, but you have no resources. Just remember that for later. We will go over that again. Now, Chudan, she is nasty, really, really nasty. You can kill her quite quickly if you've got high damage, but if not, you have to manage without it. You'll have to follow the mechanics, shall we say. Now, if you see that lightning dome over the Argonian there, that's relevant. I told you you always get kind of ideas as to what's coming next. That's what's coming next. If you see that lightning dude, Chudan needs to knock it over. And this is how you do it. You hold the boss still, Make sure that it's turned away from the group as the tank. You will get adds. If you've got low damage in your group, focus the adds instead of the boss. That way you don't get overwhelmed and you're fine. But if you've got high damage, of course you can focus the boss instead. And you can see the lightning ball beside me, to my right, in fact behind me now. Now one person will get an AoE and they have to go behind or in front of it to lead Chudan to them. There's the straight line. He charges under the ground, knocks the lightning out of the room. If you don't stand behind or in front of it, make sure you dodge roll when Chudan gets to you, then you'll miss and the room will take constant lightning damage and it is evil. Now, every phase of that, you will get archers in the room as well. Now, you've got two options. You can either maintain as much as you can, of course, if you're an experienced group, or you can get your tank to pull them all in and make sure that you focus the adds. 
During the fight, however, Chudan will spit kind of poison three times in a row at the tank or whoever's got aggro. You can dodge roll it three times if you're very, very quick and if you've got enough sustain um, or stamina to do so. You can also put damage shields up while blocking to make sure that you survive. Or if you are a Dragon Knight, you can put on the, uh, the flappy wings and the dragon scales and basically flip it back at him. We have too many archers, so we're going to focus them, but you don't have to if you don't want to. Remember, the two main points are focus the adds if you're in trouble. And if one person gets an AoE around them, they have to find that lightning ball. If you don't find the big dome with the lightning on it, then you're stuffed. Because everyone's going to take AoE damage. So we'll look for it again. We've got two more adds come up. Deal with those quickly because they're a pain. They do kind of work the same as the rest of the Ninja Turtles. And you see the lightning to our right. One person behind me's got the AoE. Quickly run to the lightning. In front or behind. Choice is yours. And Chudan will go under the ground. Bam. Lightning guy gone. Carry on as normal. Really, really simple stuff. It looks a lot more hectic than it is. We're pacing our damage like hell to make sure we get as many adds as possible, just to show you how overwhelmed you can get. But generally, if you've got lots and lots of damage, you won't see anywhere near as many as that. So, basics are, Chudan turned away from the group. If you get an AoE, look for the big dome and stand next to it, in front or behind of it. Apart from that, it's very, very simple fight. Heavy attacks need to be blocked, and if she's spitting at the tank, either keep up the heals or keep up your protection as much as you can, or fling it back if you're a Dragon Knight. Now this pull is nasty because we've got Sludge Slingers. Remember I said that these will heavy attack one member of the group? Yeah, they do. They really, really hurt. So you've got to focus these guys. Two major focuses in this dungeon are Stone Shapers, if you see them, and Sludge Slingers. You do not want to be messing with those. They've got to die, and they will enrage as well. So make sure that you always focus them first. The rest of the adds can be pulled in, but they are not a priority. The priority is the, the Sludge Slinger. We've got another one here off to the right. He can be interrupted, by the way. So if he does try channeling anything, just make sure you interrupt him. You're looking for the red sparks. If it's the white sparks, block. Otherwise you are in deep, deep shit. They do have a fair amount of health as well. So if you are of a low DPS group, you're going to be there for a little while. So just make sure that you do focus the mechanics more than anything else and you won't die. If you do miss that heavy attack, it's guaranteed that DPS or a healer is dead. Now, you won't see too many of those. I believe through the dungeon there is around maybe seven of them. I could be wrong, but there is an achievement for them, so do make sure you kill them. I know you can sneak past this particular room and save yourself a bit of hassle, but I would recommend killing them if you're going for the achievement, because of course, it's the only way to get it. Another load screen here. There's quite a few of these. Again, just remind yourselves always of primary targets. Turtles must be turned away from the group. Stone Shapers and uh, Sludge Slingers must be aggroed instantly by the tank, and they must be focused by the group as well. So those three now are your your main kind of kill him first so be aware there is also an achievement here where if you kill every single enemy in the dungeon you will get an achievement so make sure you kill everything again same as before everything should be pulled into the center make sure that a turtle is turned away from the group so we don't get splattered with aoe's and do as much damage as you can in area effect while focusing him down now you will notice that there's a, a mason, I believe he was called, I may have been wrong. Um, he's kind of a caster, and if he gets away with casting his abilities, he will put on a damage shield, so then you have to do extra damage to get him down. They're not primary targets as such, but the, the faster you kill them, the less chance you have of them uh, putting on the damage shield, and it takes you less time to kill them, basically. Now, if you look at this part on the map, you'll, you'll see that this bit gets a little bit busy. There's lots of different directions to go, lots of little dead ends and bits and pieces like that. Just kill everything you can if you're going for the achievements. Failing that, you can just go the one way that will take you from start to finish. Did you see there? I got uppercutted by a stone shaper. That is two things there. One, why the tank should grab it straight away. And two, why you should block. I'm sitting on 20k health and he almost killed me. Any other squishy DPS that's sitting kind of 16 to 19k health, you're going to be toasted instantly. That's a that's a one shot to a DPS or healer. So be very, very careful. Make sure you block it if it's on you. Obviously I didn't. And if you're the tank, make sure you grab that target first. They're your primary focus. Gain another room. Usual stuff. Stone shape up first. You see the tank grab them instantly there. No problem. Now the rest aren't aggroed. So if they aren't aggroed, you don't need to pull them in yet. But if they are, obviously drag them into the middle so they can die in AoE while you're focusing the Stone Shaper. We've got a Mason in the room over there. Um, he needs to die quick if you can help it, but if not, he's just going to take a little bit longer. 
he does make himself have a damage shield if he stays alive for too long. He's not that problematic though, he doesn't hit too hard, so don't panic if he's not dead yet. Just focus him as and when you can. He's not as deadly as the Stone Shapers and the Sludge Slingers. They are a problem. Got some more adds in the corner here. Your tank can even run straight in or pull them out. Whichever happens, happens. Again, focus the Mason if you have to. Because he's obviously got the most health. But if you leave him open, he's going to put on a damage shield and he's harder to kill. Rinse repeat for the most part. But for God's sake, taunt those Stone Shapers. They really, really hurt. Remember the, the rule for the Stone Shaper, however. It's not just his heavy attack you've got to be careful of. If he raises his hand and rocks are flying around in the sky, you have to block. Each one will hit you and knock you down. And of course, when you get up, you are CC immune, so you can't be knocked down again. But you can still be hit. The second one will kill you. Mason in the middle, focus him down so he doesn't get a damage shield on, while AoEing the rest. Again, tank has taunted everything, make sure they're all turned away from the group. Watch out for the lightning AoEs though, because they're quite nasty. Like I said, you don't have to go these directions if you're not going for the achievement. But um, if you are, then of course go for it. You can just go straight through. Last ad pull up here before we come out into the open again. Stone Shaper in the middle goes straight for him as the tank. He's got to be grabbed first and spun around from the group. As much AoE damage down as possible. While obviously keeping the heals coming. As soon as that Stone Shaper dies, you're pretty much safe. But if he's still alive... He can be a problem and this is very important for the last boss as well you will get stone shapers in the room and if you don't kill them then your group is probably going to wipe if you don't get rid of them quick enough nine times out of ten three out of the four maybe even two out of the four people will block those stones which results in a wipe you got to make sure everybody does another load screen there's a few <laughs> it's like white gold tower all over again lots and lots of different rooms to go through this is a uh, almost like an arena. Three ad waves, one after the other. There will be Ninja Turtles. Make sure that they are held still and turned away from the group. Otherwise, they're going to start burrowing under the ground and darting at people or ducking their heads in and throwing splash damage out of where you've got to be really, really careful. Team just plays dead for a moment because he's a scaredy cat. There he goes, he's laying on the ground. Worse. There's more to it than that, but that's my... That's what I think he's doing. Okay, grab the Stone Shaper straight away. Make sure that he is focused. As you can see, the group is blocking. We're still doing damage because you can block cast. You can hold block while doing certain abilities, but you have to block the stones. Otherwise, you're going to get decked. Next phase is two Ninja Turtles plus some Lightning Dudes. We've got the ranged ones to be pulled in as soon as possible. Though he came in anyway. Make sure you pay attention to interrupts, especially on archers and anything like that, because they can do some nasty stuff from range, but they do need to be pulled in. The mason, of course, remember he has a damage shield, so the faster you get rid of that, the better, but he's not really a major problem, especially if he's taunted by the tank. Your main focus here as the tank is to make sure that you turn those two turtles away from the group, and the group focuses them down. He does his little burrowing effect again. Just stay out of it, and you'll be fine. If you get caught by it, you'll get knocked over. It'll take about half your health as a DPS or a healer, so it's not massive, but if you are low at the time, especially if you're overwhelmed by too many adds, then you will cop it, so be really, really careful with that. You can block it, however, but the easiest step is, of course, just stand out of it. Last wave, Stone Shaper. First of all, grab him, taunt him, turn away from the group, and the group need to kill him. But if you look carefully, you can see you've got two Stone Shapers and an Overseer. This is a filthy pull. When the stones are in the air, everybody block. Focus on one target at a time. Two stone shapers first. The overseer will heavy attack the tank or a DPS if he's loose, so make sure you do block that. But your key focus here is the two stone shapers first, then the overseer. The adds can be pulled in as and when, and also will need to be interrupted if they start channeling. If you start running around, losing your mind, sprinting around in circles, doing the maelstrom shuffle, and you try and kill the adds around the outside instead of the ones in the middle, then you're going to die. Two stone shapers up is a massive problem, especially when they both start channeling those rocks at the same time. You don't want that to happen. Another go on the floor mechanic. 
It helps if you can kill the mud crabs. I mean, if you take the green stuff to the water straight away, really, really fast, then the mud crabs will die. But as you can see, I landed in it after someone dropped it, and the mud crab's trying to kill me. So you've got two options. You can either swap really, really fast, or just kill them and then just move on. It's a lot, lot easier if you kill them, to be fair. Then you can walk as slow as you like and not get killed. Another load screen. Sludge slingers. We love these. Be really, 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 really careful. We've got an army of enemies here. We've got some standard ads. We've got some sludge slingers. We've got some mud crabs. There'll be some trolls later on as well. You've got to be really careful in here. Trolls on the left, actually. So if you can manage it without aggro and everything in the room, focus these one at a time. So as you can see, the sludge slinger wasn't with us to start with. The one at the back. And now he is. So focus the one you were killing in the first place. Make sure your tank is grabbing both of them and turning them away from the group. Whenever they start channeling, interrupt. And when they do that, block. As you can see, he was after the healer. The healer blocked and he was fine. If he hadn't have blocked, he would have died. They do enrage, so you have to be very, very careful. When they're flashing red, they hit really, really hard. Make sure you focus these down. Now, the rest of the ad should be pulled in by the tank if you can reach. But don't do that at the expense of obviously losing the sludge slingers. Stone Shaper is in the room as well. He is a priority. But you must make sure the sludge slingers go down first. Because those have the nasty charge ability and it's really easy to get caught out. So in the event of that happening where you've got sludge slingers and stone shapers in the same room. Slingers always have to die first. Stone shapers can be blocked. Slingers hit way, way, way too hard. You've got to be careful. This is simple. Pull all the mud crabs in. Taunt the troll. Turn it away. Focus him. Mud crabs will die. Really, really simple stuff. Now, I know you can skip this section. Yes, you can sneak past, but obviously, what's the point of me showing you mechanics if we're going to show you how to sneak and skip it? If Zos ever managed to make stuff in here uh, not skippable, then you would be stuffed. So we've got to show you what to do. Next section of the room is pretty much the same kind of enemies you've seen already. There's a couple of trolls, there's some mud crabs, same pull as the one we just now encountered. Get off the water because it's really difficult over there. You can't see because you get stuck between the scenery. Now, the trolls should be turned to one side. Obviously, you can see our tank has grabbed them straight away. Make sure you interrupt them if they do channel. Strangely enough, these ones do. But above all, focus one troll at a time if you can while keeping as much air of effect down as possible as the DPS and all the mud crabs will disappear before the trolls do. They're really not that hard. The only problem is if you get them on you and you start running around the room, it's going to be really, really hard for the tank to take them off you. So don't do that. Don't sprint around, running off, panicking. Just bring everything to the tank and focus. We've got a couple more trolls, so make sure obviously the tank goes first. Grab these, turn them away. Same scenario as before. There's actually three. Make sure that you are not in the trolls' faces. Make sure that you are not in their AoEs when they're slamming the ground. And make sure you interrupt them if you have to. The reason you don't want to stand in front of these is because they've got a nasty kind of cleave effect where they flurry at the tank or in the direction of whoever's got aggro. And if you get caught in that, a couple of hits will do some serious damage. You don't want to get caught by that nasty stuff. Do not stand in front of them as a DPS if you can help it. Definitely not as a healer. You'll get wiped. Another load screen. This room, yes, you can sneak through it, but no, we're not going to. You can see we've got a sludge slinger to the left. There's one at the right at the very back there. We've also got a nasty, nasty in front of us who we don't like messing with. You have to make sure you get rid of these. There's three sludge slingers, in fact. There's one at the very far back left of the room. Now, these have huge aggro range, so you have to be really, really careful. As soon as you pull one, they're all going to start coming in. So the stone shaper, obviously you have to make sure you pay attention to him and the blocks as the rocks are now in the air. But focus the sludge slinger. The stone shaper actually has less health than the sludge slinger, so he will die to AoE if you focus him instead. So just keep on him, burn him down, make sure you interrupt if you have to. Which is just a bash or an interrupt, you know how to do those, they're in the tutorial. And in the meantime, if he starts heavy attack on one of the members of the group, make sure that person blocks. Easiest way to manage this is if you stand in kind of a triangle formation then you can see which one he's aiming at instead of you all having to block. Although if you all do block, then at least you all know what you're doing. Again, two sludge slingers here. Watch out. Block that. Focus one. Keep your AoE up and then focus the other when he's dead. You can bring that archer in and you do need to interrupt him as well, especially when he's all bright red because he's enraging. But where he's standing, you don't really have to pull him in. You can kind of just put the sludge slinger on top of his head and he'll die to AoE anyway. Main point in this area is do not panic. 
you are dealing with some really nasty enemies. They can one-shot people. You've got three of them, in fact, when you first come in here, plus a Stone Shaper. Just practice what you've learned up to this point, and you'll be fine. That archer up there is a pain in the ass. He gets stuck sometimes. So does that one. So just let your tank go up there. Make sure he's got aggro. Even the range taunt will do while you're getting up there and kind of getting their attention. And then pull them together and kill them. They don't have massive health. They can be interrupted. And they can be killed quite quickly. So they're not too dangerous. They're just annoying. If you're down below and you're killing the two sludge slingers, or three sludge slingers rather, um, as long as you stay to the back of the room where we first started, they can't reach you anyway. Now... Boss before last. This one is the Pug Killer. This is the one that destroys groups over and over and over and over. Now look very carefully around the room. You'll see three Wamasus. Every one phase, which we'll get to, you want to make sure that one person kills one of the um, handlers that are holding onto the Wamasu. So as soon as he goes immune. Now, stack him in the middle. Watch out for his cleave effect there. You can see that big breath. As the tank, obviously you can take it as the group, you can't. Do not stand in front of his face. Block his heavy attacks. And also, when this happens, he's immune. He puts some spit on the floor. Stay out of it. Make sure people are interrupting the archers. Now, one person needs to hit one Wamasu handler, and he'll run around and kill all the archers. The other needs to pick up that goo off the floor. You can see I'm running as far as I can. I've got no resources. I'm going to run out. I'm going to run out. Pop the synergy and let go of it. If someone else takes it off me, I'll help them stay alive and they deposit it in the water. In the meantime, you have to deal with mud crabs and a troll. As you can see, the Wamasu is running around killing everything. If you don't release the Wamasus, you're gonna be in trouble. Do not release them all at once. Only one per immune phase, and it's three phases. So, once you've gone back to normal, focus the troll, then back onto the boss. As much damage as you can while holding him still. Now he's gone immune again, spits on the floor, don't stand in it until you've decided where the water is. If you can see it, pick it up. If you can't, wait. Otherwise, you're just going to run around really slow for no reason. As you can see, it's in the corner, so I'll pick it up and run to it. Wamasu has been released by another group member, so he's running around killing stuff for us. We've got one more Wamasu left. I'm too slow. Drop it. Give it to somebody else. They can now run through it, pick it up, and deposit it in the water. Then... He's not immune anymore. That's how it works. Pick up the goo, put it in the water, he's not immune. Pick up the goo, put it in the water, he's not immune. Simple as that. Keep him in the middle, do as much damage as you can while focusing that troll down because you don't want multiple trolls. Now, he does have a heavy attack, or looks like a heavy attack, where he will charge at a member of the group. If you bash him as he starts running, it will be interrupted. So just remember that part. He's immune again. Every time he gets to a certain phase, he will go immune. You can see that the water's at the very far end of the room. I can see where the juice is on the floor, so I'm going to go pick it up. I'll get not far short of almost there. I'll have to drop it. Somebody else picks it up and does it for me. In the meantime, I go back in and try and get rid of as many adds as possible, while the Wamasu also helps us get rid of these archers. Remember, release one Wamasu by killing its handler every phase. Not all of them at once, and don't leave them all till the end. So I've taken it put it in the thing obviously no one picked it up so i can still pick it up myself but only after a set amount of time you are on cooldown after you drop it now that he's not immune anymore everybody in the middle make sure you do as much damage to him and the trolls as possible and it's game over as you saw then he did that charge ability at me he was about to come running at me and smack me in the face when that happens like i said you can bash him and it will interrupt him from doing so it looks like a heavy attack but it's actually an interruptible attack i think that's the only confusing one like that in the game but you can you can get away with just bashing him, but you can't do it while he's channeling it as such he has to have left his spot and started running now we're approaching the last boss but we do have a rather interesting uh puzzle room which is is quite long but there is an achievement for it so if you get it correct you will actually unlock an achievement for this. And this does go towards, well, the uh, the Mazatun or Shadows of the Hist achievements. There's a lot to do for the skin. You've got to uh, do speed runs, no deaths, and hard modes, and all that good stuff. This one is actually quite fun. Now, first of all, you've got this big, big pull of ads. Look for the Stone Shapers. Where is he? Get the tank on him ASAP. There you go. Tank's grabbed him. Even blocked the heavy attack. Perfect. Now, you've got to focus him first. If you get caught in the lightning, worst case scenario, block it. Just remember though, there are two stone shapers here, not just one, so make sure you get them both. Your tank needs to make sure that he grabs them both into the center and when the rocks come up, you block. 
If you are a DPS or a healer and one of them gets loose and it tries to heavy attack you, again, same applies, you must block. Unlike earlier where I had 20.4k health, most DPS don't have that and they will die to a one shot. Now this is the puzzle room. As you can see on the ground, there's a rather large Argonian kind of relic puzzle type system where one symbol is illuminated at any one time. There's only one symbol and what you have to do is match the symbol to the buttons around the room. Now, if you match the correct symbol, you will release an Argonian captive. So they are free. It will actually release them out of the cage. The cage opens up and you're done. If you get it wrong, they will be covered in amberplasm and melt and die. So you don't want to do that. Now, of course, you kill the Overseer first. He has a nasty heavy attack. And make sure you put as much AoE down as possible while holding everything still. As the tank there is, you make sure you hold everything still. Do not, do not stand in front of those Overseers as a DPS or a healer. Now, again, rinse, repeat, find the correct symbol, find the correct button that goes alongside of it, and everything will open up, the person gets released, and then you get more ads again. Now, if you kill the Argonian by pressing the wrong button, you will still get a wave of ads. There's no way around it. You have to fight them no matter what. There is a way to actually press multiple buttons at once and make the whole wave come together in one go, but that's not what we're doing here. We're showing you the, the system and the puzzle itself. Now there is an achievement for this. It's very important to note. So if you do want to get that achievement, make sure you press the correct buttons. Don't just go in there yellow and pressing anything. Overseer again, make sure you focus him down, otherwise you are in trouble. Nasty heavy attacks. You can bring in the others from the outside via chains or whatever you've got for your tank. But later on during this, you will get different enemies as well. You'll get stone shapers, you'll get masons, and all that good stuff. Masons aren't too bad. We've seen them before. They have a damage shield, um, so they take a bit longer to kill. But they kind of hover around the outside rather than getting stuck in. So don't worry about those too much. Focus them if you can, but that's a normal, uh, fairly safe wave. What is the problem is the stone shapers, which you're now going to start getting. And there's one right there. Heavy attack in the tank instantly. Now, that doesn't always happen. Our tank was quite quick off the ball to grab him, so fair enough, good job. But in a lot of situations, especially pickup groups, the tank doesn't always grab that stone shaper quick enough and he will come bolting in and uppercut a DPS. As a DPS or a healer, in fact, you do have to be aware that after round three, stone shapers are coming and you might cop a one shot, so be very, very careful. Here we've got an overseer, we've also got another overseer to the side and then we've got a third one coming in from the back as well, so you have to be very careful of these. They are your primary focus, but of course, cluster everything up as much as you can to deal as much AoE damage as you can while focusing one target on and then on to the next. If you can chain these archers in, then of course that would be a benefit, but if not, make sure as um, a group, not just the tank, you are interrupting them if you need to. Again, make sure you always match up the correct symbol. If you're not sure, just run back and double check. Don't press it if you're not sure, because you're gonna balls it up for the rest of the group. Stone Shaper in the middle, again, he comes straight in. He can heavy attack someone instantly, so be very, very careful. As the tank, make sure you grab him straight away. As soon as that wave is ready, grab him. You got Mason at the side. He does put on damage shields from time to time, like we've said already, but he's not that much of a problem. They can be chained as well, so you can bring them in if you spot them. 355k health plus a damage shield is a bit boring. So he's a bit of a stack and burn test. It's not that dangerous. Now we've got one more wave to go. There are six. It's quite long. But once you release the last one, you've got a stone shaper to the left and a stone shaper to the right. They must be grabbed fast. He went straight for me then. Block him. Make sure that he doesn't kill you. Remember, simple heavy attack rules. If you heavy attack something that's off balance, you will do an extra 70% damage to your heavy attack. You will also, if they are CCable, knock them down. So there's a... And you'll get double resources back as well. So there's a little tip for you. If you are the one that blocked the Stone Shaper, heavy attack it instantly. You will get resources back, you'll do more damage to it, and you will knock him down. That way he becomes less of a problem. He's not going to stand there in your face throwing rocks left, right, and center. Now the last boss. Yes, we're going to press hard mode. And yes, I'm going to show you some sneaky tricks as to how to uh, manage this fight without going full out YOLO, basically. Now, when you first get into the room, of course, there is a scroll on the left-hand side. Activate this and hard mode will be active. Now, in non-hard mode, you are not so overwhelmed with ads and all that good stuff. You have certain ones that don't appear and the boss has less health. But on hard mode, it's a bit of a nightmare. Although, if you focus, 
you can do this no problem. The key is coordination within your group. You must know where everybody is. You must be able to pay attention to what's going on. Taunt the boss, spin her around, hold her still. Now, as you may have noticed, there's a load of statues around the outside of the room. They are very important. Pay attention to them in a moment. Now, a totem has spawned. Put the boss on the totem and kill it. You must kill that totem. That's your primary target. Otherwise, it will drain a member of your group of resources and you will die. Once it's dead, focus on the boss again, and when she's around 70% she'll go into a little cage. This is the point where you start seeing the bosses again from the rest of the dungeon. The tank should hold this one very still and next to the boss. Now, you've got two options here. You can kill it really, really fast, or you can pace it and let your tank hold on to this boss. It's got low health, while you focus on heavy attacking and building up your ultimate. Now, one heavy attack will grant you three ultimate every second for eight seconds or a light attack heavy or light both the same so all you need to do really is keep a little bit of passive damage on it not enough to kill it but enough for you to build up your ultimate and make sure the rest of your group have got theirs as well now you don't want to use it on her when she first comes out because one of you is going to be cursed which i'll explain in a moment what you want to do is use it on the ads because they are evil so once that boss goes down she's released and she's cursed me now i need to know which statue to go to so, one of the group members is going to run over there and tell me exactly where it is. There it is. Now, if I continue to hit it with any button, because all my abilities look exactly the same now, I will kill the statue and I will be removed from the curse. This is where you move together as a group. I don't just run over there by myself because someone told me to go there. I run over there with the group and the group comes with me. So the tank brings the boss here, the healer comes over here, the DPS comes over here, all the adds come over here, and then you drop your ultimates on the adds. Remember, focus the stone shaper you see a stone shaper it must die now these ads spawn as soon as someone is cursed so you have to pay very close attention to that now make sure you get rid of the ads you don't have to focus the boss again remember we can use them to build up ultimate so get rid of the remaining ads in the room get together make sure that that boss is hugged up next to where the boss is hidden in her cage and you can just build ultimate again of course you can burn him if you want but you don't have to so what we do is just use him as a light attack dummy. We we just hold light attack every so often, or press light attack every so often, keep up our passive ultimate gain and buffs or bonuses, and go from there. Once we've all got ultimate, we go again. Remember, every time that boss is released, after one of the bosses has been killed, you can interrupt that. Remember, the charge can be interrupted, exactly the same as the boss that you actually fought. They're mirror images of the, the bosses you've seen before. Every time the boss comes out of the cage, she will curse one person and release the adds. So be very aware of that. If you are the person that's cursed, you have found the statue that you need to kill and you are hitting it, just be aware of the stone shaper because if he does put the rocks in the air, you've got a block. Now, someone's going to get cursed again. It's another member of our group. Now, I'm going to look for it. Where is it? Over there. So that person is now going to follow me and so is the rest of the group. Now we know which one to hit. Now, if you're in a pickup and you don't have comms or anything like that, it's a very good trick to actually just jump up and down with a hello emote or something to that effect showing where this particular place is then everybody knows where to go remember stone shaper must be killed first the totem has spawned as well and the totem is primary you must kill that now get off the stone shaper kill that totem then go back as you were remember if the stones are in the air you just saw me get knocked down then you must block last phase boss goes a bit mental this looks like it costs a little bit more damage than it does but it's not that bad so all you need to do here is hold her still Focus your feet and make sure that you do as much damage as you can while she holds still. If you've got low damage, do not worry. You're just going to get extra phases of adds and totems. Now, you can see that there are splashes on the ground. They are the ones that you really need to be aware of. The little disco lights that are going on, don't worry too much about those. You can stand in them. But the big splashes are the ones that you have to stand out of. During the execute phase, you can get somebody who is cursed. We just had that then. It just happened. When they're cursed, you still have to show them where the totem is or the statue rather, and you still have to make sure that they release themselves of that curse. So the longer you're in that fight, obviously the more mechanics you have to deal with. If you've got low damage, you can do it. If you've got high damage, you can do it. High damage, of course, gives you the ability to burn it. Low damage means that you just have to deal with more adds, more totems, and more curses. The fight, however, is exactly the same. So again, the disco lights on the ground, the kernel effects, don't panic. You will be able to survive in those. It's the big splashes you've got to watch out for.
Anyway, hopefully that helped, hopefully that wasn't too boring, hopefully that wasn't too confusing, and hopefully you now have a better understanding of how to approach that particular dungeon, and maybe a little bit more confidence in terms of actually um, getting stuck into it, because I know a lot of people are really intimidated by some of the Shadows of the Hiss dungeons, and some of the later ones as well. They are quite rough, but once you get used to it, and take those mechanics chunk by chunk, and then put it together like a jigsaw puzzle, it all makes sense. Anyway, first of all, thank you all very, very much for watching. I hugely appreciate the support. And if you are not subscribing already, please do hit that button. It is free. Furthermore, if you want to help support the channel outside of YouTube, there are some links in the description for Patreon, Twitter, Facebook, and of course the website, zynodegaming.com, where all the written guides are as well. Don't forget, I also live stream on Twitch at 10 p.m. UK time every night. So hopefully I'll see some of you there. Once again, thank you all very, very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.